So hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you the building count estimation using Google Open Building 2.5D dataset in Google Earth Engine. So now let's get started. So Open Building dataset. So the dataset availability is from 2016 to 2023. And the dataset provided is Google Research Open Building. And using this particular code, you can access this particular data that is Open Building data. data. So the resolution of this particular data is around 4 meters. And the short description about this data, the Open Building 2.5 temporal data dataset contains the data about building presence, the fractional building counts, and building heights at an effective spatial resolution of 4 meters. The raster is provided at 0.5 meter resolution at an annual cadence from 2016 to 2023. It is provided from open source low resolution imagery from Sentinel 2 collection. And the data set available across Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia, Latin America, and Caribbean. The goal of this data is to support uh, organizations focusing on range of applications for social good. So the resolution of this particular data is around 4 meters. And uh, these are the following bands that is available in this data set, starting with the building fractional count, the source data for deriving the building counts for the given AOI, that is area of interest and building height ranges from 0 to 100 meters. The building height relative to terrain in the region varies from 0 to 100 meters. And the building presence, the model confidence value for us ranges from 0, 0.0 to 1.0. So now uh, let me get back to Earth Engine. So we're going to use a specific band to count the number of uh, building in the given uh, region of interest or our area of interest. So let me get back to Earth Engine. So to first to define a region of interest, we're going to define a variable called region of interest equals to earthengine.geometry.polygon. So convert the given latitude and longitude to a polygon. So these are the given latitude and longitude of study region. For example, if you want to count the number of buildings that is available in this particular study region. So uh, this particular variable is going to hold a latitude and longitude of this particular study region. So currently we are visualizing the latitude and longitude of the study region. So where we're going to count the number of buildings that is available in this particular area of interest. So to create your own area of interest, it is simple as it looks. So we're going to navigate this option called uh, draw rectangle. So once you did that, uh, we're going to uh, create uh, our area of interest using this particular tool, draw rectangle. And once you did that, we're going to exceed this. And uh, in the top section, we have this variable called geometry. And in that, we have this option called show generated code. And in that, we're going to copy the latitude and longitude of this particular study region. And we're going to paste it here. So now we're going to have created our area of interest. So we have to paste this uh, latitude and longitude here in this variable. And this variable is going to convert this latitude and longitude into a, a polygon. So once you did that, next, uh, we're going to navigate to, uh, we're going to add this layer to Earth Engine. So to do that, we're going to define, uh, to add our study region, we're going to define map.add layer region of interest with the default visualization parameter and we're going to output the layer name as region of interest and to center this particular uh, area we're going to define uh, we're going to define map.center object region of interest with a suitable zoom level so my suitable zoom level is around 16 you can uh, you can adjust according to your choice here so in the next section uh, we're going to load our google open building temporal dataset into earth engine so to do that we're going to define a variable called building temporal equals to earth engine dot image collection google research open building temporal v1 so in the next step uh, we have to define the the scale or the spatial resolution for our analysis so to define the scale of our analysis first we are going to define a variable called analysis scale equals to one so the value one which means uh, which means uh, one meter per pixel resolution is used for the analysis when aggregating the data over the area of interest so 1 meter means more detailed result and 10 or 30 meters means less detail but faster the analysis is. So in the next uh, code we're going to specify the time period of analysis. For example, our time period of analysis is going to be between 2018 to 2023. So to uh, provide that, uh, we're going to define a variable. So we're going to define as a for uh, variable year equals to 2018. So it's going to be the start of the analysis and the variable is less than uh, 2024 and uh, year that is yr plus plus so we're gonna our analysis analysis is gonna start from 2018 to 2023 based on this particular condition so in the next step uh, we have to convert the year into 
Unix uh, timestamp. So for that first uh, we have to define our uh, reference state. So we're going to specify the specific uh, time period for our uh, reference state. So based on that particular date we're going to extract those images uh, in that particular uh, date and uh, we're going to count the number of building that is available during uh, that particular that particular day and month for uh, each and uh, from the year 2018 to 2023. So for that we're going to define this reference state variable reference state equals to earth engine dot date earth engine dot string. So basically I'm creating this using this particular function called earth engine dot date function to create the earth engine uh, date objects for uh, for uh, the June uh, 30 of the given year uh, using the Los Angeles time zone. So we are specifying the time zone here, the America, Los Angeles. And uh, we are using this cat function here. So the cat, uh, so this particular cat function is uh, concatenates the string 2020 with June 30 to create a full date string of 2020, June 30. And uh, this particular function, earth engine.date with the American Los Angeles, uh, it's going to create an earth engine object, uh, date object for the June 30 of the given year using the Los Angeles uh, time zone. So in next step, we're going to apply this uh, dot millisecond function. So to convert the date into a millisecond since the Unix epoch. So which starts the midnight of Jan 1, 1970 UTC. Next to convert further to convert the millisecond to second, we're going to divide it by thousand. So for that, we are using this function called dot divide thousand. So it converts the milliseconds to second. The Unix time is uh, traditionally in seconds, not in milliseconds. So for that, we are applying this particular function dot divide thousand in order to convert the milliseconds to seconds. So once we created the reference state, uh, next step, based on this reference state, we're going to extract the image for each year and we're going to count the number of building that is available in our area of interest. So the next step, we're going to filter the dataset for the exact timestamp and merge the tiles into a one image. So for that, we're going to create a variable called yearly mosaic equals to the building temporal. So the building temporal, which refers to our Google uh, open building dataset, uh, dataset here. So we're, we are referring to that particular variable. And uh, in that variable, we're going to apply some uh, filter functions. So we're going to filter, uh, we're going to apply this filter function dot filter earth engine dot filter dot equal inference time epoch. So inference time epoch is equals to the reference state. And uh, based on this reference state, uh, we're going to extract this on this particular time of the year to extract that particular image. And later we're going to apply this uh, mosaic function in order to do, in order to merge the tiles into a one single image. So for that, we are using this dot mosaic function. So once we have mosaic the image, next uh, we're going to estimate the building total uh, building count building counts using the reduced region over the area of interest. So to do that, we're going to define another variable called building count estimate equals to yearly mosaic. So we are referring to this particular uh, variable yearly mosaic and uh, we're going to apply the reduce region function here. So in the reducer, we're going to apply earth engine dot reduce dot sum function. So we are applying the statistical function called sum here, summing up the fractional building count pixels and the geometry. We're going to apply the region of interest that is our study region. So we are applying the, the region of interest refers to refers to our area of interest. For example, this particular one. So in the red color, you can able to see that. And the scale uh, referring to the spatial resolution. So we are referring to the analysis scale here, which is around one meter. We have uh, done it. So uh, which is higher resolution. So in order to get a detailed uh, analysis for that, we are applying the that particular value one here. So that is the resolution of the analysis. In the next code, we are dealing with a coordinate reference system. So we are applying this projection that uh, that is a region of interest dot projection function to use a projection of for, for area of interest. And last, uh, to get the total number of building that is available in our region of interest, we are applying this function called dot get number that is building fractional count. So to extract the summed uh, counts, that is total number of building that is available in our region of interest. So for that, we are applying dot get number. It's referring to the building uh, fractional count. So building fractional count uh, refers to this particular uh, band here. So the source data for deriving the building counts for the given area of interest. And last, we are multiplying the multiplying uh, with uh, the analysis value that is one multiplying two to the power of two. So it's going to give us two to the power of two. It's going to give us four uh, meters. That is the original resolution of this particular imagery. 
So we are applying this dot multiply earth engine dot number and the analysis scale that is analysis scale is around one. So we are multiplying multiplying by two to the power of uh, two. So two to, the, two to the power of two is going to give us four. That is four meters. That is original resolution of this particular imagery. So you can able to see this four meters. And last to add the building presence map to the earth engine for the map viewer for each year. So you can able to view the building uh, presence uh, raster for each year. So for that we're gonna add this. Uh, we're gonna add the building presence layer into earth engine. So to do that we're gonna define map dot add layer yearly mosaic dot select building presence. So we are selecting the building presence band here. So the building presence band which indicates the the model confidence of. Uh, so no, it's going to give us the how the confident the model that is the pixel is a part of building. So ranges from 0 0.1, 0 0.0 to 1.0. So if the model confidence is greater than 0 0.9, so it's by high, it is highly possible that there are presence of building. So let me get back to Earth Engine. And uh, to add the building presence layer to Earth Engine, we define map dot add layer yearly mosaic dot select. We are selecting this particular band from our open uh, Google Open Building dataset, and we are applying minimum of zero and to a maximum one. So zero, which indicates the no, absence of building, and one and one, which indicates the the presence of building. And last, we can apply year dot uh, to string. So we are applying to convert uh, this numeric to a string value. So for that, we are applying this function year dot to string function. And last to uh, see the total number of building count that is available for available for each year from 2018 to 2023, we're going to apply print estimated building count in uh, plus year. So this one is going to give us total number of building count that is available in the each year. And it's going to mention the year. And to get the info, we're going to mention the building count estimate dot get info. So now let us visualize the result here. So we're going to navigate to this option called run and click run. So once you did that, uh, it's going to uh, zoom into your study region, the area of interest. So now we can able to see in the console section, uh, we have estimated building count uh, in the study area. So for example, in 2018, so the total number of building that is available in this area is around 2,299. And in, uh, estimated in 2019, uh, 2019, it is around 2,603. And the estimated in 2020, it is around 2,954. And the estimated building count in 2021, it is around 3,003. And uh, in 2022, it is keep on is increasing. So the building count is increasing in each year in the study region. You can able to see from this particular data. So uh, in 2023, the total is around 3,429 buildings that is available in this uh, area of interest. So uh, let us visualize the layers here. So uh, I'm going to turn on this uh, other turn of other layers here. So this is 20, 2018. Let me zoom out. So this is total number of building that uh, you can able to visualize in the study area during 2018. And uh, this is in 2019. So you can able to see a small number of building has merged uh, here. So you can able to see that. And similarly in 2020. So this is a 2020 image. So you can able to see and uh, in 2021 and in 2022 so new buildings has emerged and last in 2023 you can able to see the new emergence of new buildings in uh, in the study area so in this video i have shown you uh, the building count estimation using uh, google open building 2.5d dataset in google earth engine so uh, the code link is given in the description. So thanks for watching and uh, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and give us a like.